So we're starting to tonight a new a new letter, a new simon in the Gersh Sakrid, the Simon Chav Zayin, page 290. And uh, let's read um, the Kepel, the title over here. Not written by the Alter Rebbe, but written by the publishers of Tanya. Masha Kosov. This is a letter which the Alter Rebbe wrote. Li Yeshvei Eretz Hakodesh. To the, those who lived in the Chassidim and Eretz Yisrael, although it's probably a, probably a mistake, this was a letter that was written to Chassidim and Eretz Yisrael and also the Chassidim in Russia. To console them, give them a double consolation, al petiras after the passing of Rav Agoyin Hamefursam, Isha Likim, a godly person, Kaddish. <coughs> A holy person, and there you saw the light of Israel, Amud Hayimani, the right hand pillar, Patish Achazak, the powerful hammer, Merenu Rabbeinu Arav Rav Menachem Mendel Nishmasei. So this is a letter that the Rebbe wrote to console the Sidim after the passing of the famous Sadik. His name was Rav Menachem Mendel. Sometimes he's known as Rav Menachem Mendel of Vitebsk. Rav Menachem Mendel. He was born in the city of Vitebsk. Sometimes he's known as Rav Menachem Mendel Haradaker. He, um, he was a rebbe in the city of Haredot, <coughs> with this Rebbe Menachem Mendel. So, the, the, the Magad of Mezrich, who was the teacher of the Alter Rebbe, passed away in the year Tov Kuf Gimel, 1772. <coughs> and Yutas Kislev of the year 1772. <coughs> the Magad had many students, and he had a, a, a very uh, elite inner circle of students who were Kedosh Elyon, the holiest of the holy, and one of these students was the Alter Rebbe. Now, the Alter Rebbe was at Tzayir Shemachabura. Alter Rebbe was one of the youngest yeah, ones. Yeah. Alter Rebbe was born in the year 1745. So you make a simple cheshbon. That means the Alter Rebbe was 27 when the Magid passed away. A young man. When the Magid passed away, so his instructions were that the one who should take over the to take over the leadership, was one of his senior students. So his name was Rebbe Nachman Mendel. This Rebbe Nachman Mendel from Vitebsk. Oh, he was originally from Vitebsk, and then he became a rabbi afterwards in Haredak. So, at that time, he became the, the leader of, of, uh, of Hasidus, and the Alter Rebbe, in fact, the Alter Rebbe was, uh, was a Hasid of his. The Alter Rebbe signed the Iksav Yiskashrus, you know, when the new Rebbe, Hasidim signed a letter saying that they give themselves over and they connect to the Rebbe. So the Alter Rebbe was a Hasid of Nachman of Haredak. This was in 1772. This is a time of terrible, terrible machlekes between Hasidim and Misnagdim. In fact, in the year 17, in the year 1776, Sir of Nachmedel of took along the Alter Rebbe, and they went to, vi- to Vilna. They wanted to visit the Vilna Goyim, be able to see if they can reach some sort of understanding. And the Vilna Goyim refused to see them. This was too much for Rebbe, for Nachmedel of Haradak. Was too much. He couldn't take the the fighting and the machlekes, and he decided that he's going to Eretz he took along with him a group of around 300 chassidim. This is in the year 1777, five years after the market passes away. And um, in this group, intent on going to Eretz Yisrael, was the Alter Rebbe. Alter Rebbe is going to go along with his new Rebbe, to Eretz Yisrael. But along the way, Reb Nachman of Haradak, along with another tzaddik, there was also a Ram of Kalisk. They convinced Alter Rebbe. Al Rebbe has to stay in Russia, and he has to be the one who is going to lead the Chassidim in Russia. So Al Rebbe turned around, and Al Rebbe went back. Al Rebbe became the Rebbe. That's when Al Rebbe already he started um, developing his unique brand of Chassidus, Chassidus Chabad. And the Nachman of Vardak went there to Israel. First, they settled in Tzfas, but it didn't work out in Tzfas. The Arabs were too tough, too difficult for them over there. So eventually, they ended up in Tveria. So this was again. This was in the year Tavkuf. Tafuf Lamed Zayin, 1777, and Reb Nachman of Haradak was there for 11 years, and in the year Tafuf Memchas, in the year, on Rosh Chodesh of the year 1788, Reb Nachman of Haradak passed away. He's buried in Tveri. He was young? No, he was yet, uh, he still, uh, he had met the Balsam Tev even. He was, uh, he was much older than Nath Rebbe. Nath Rebbe passed away in the year 1812. He passed away in 1788. Now, we know also that this, uh, this Aliyah of Chassidim Peret Yisrael was also very um, fateful, or very important in the history of Chassidim Chabad, because most, most of the letters that we're learning here in the Geras HaKedish are letters from the Alter Rebbe. What's he doing? He's raising money for this group of Chassidim that went to Eretz Yisrael together with Ram Nachman Lofar Very close relationship. In fact, 
a year later, a year after the after the Nachman al Hardak passes away, in the year Tovkuf Mem Tes, in the year 1789, the Alter Rebbe has a grandson, and my grandson, the Yikari Shmuel Yisrael, he's called Menachem Mendel. This Menachem Mendel later became the Tzemach Tzedek, right? The third Rebbe Chabad. He was named after the Menachem Mendel of Hardak. So you think about it for a second, that means very simple. It means that our Rebbe is named a name Menach Mendel after the Tzemach Tzedek. The Tzemach Tzedek was named after Menach Mendel Haradak. That means that by extension, the Rebbe is named, uh, has a name after, 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 after this person who we're talking about. So, so we have is, the Chassidim at that time are utterly shattered and broken. The Rebbe passes away. There's very, very, very few things as traumatic as having a Rebbe pass away. We're talking about a Rebbe in the, in the fullest sense of the word. By the way, the, he was the author of a sefer called Pri Haaretz. That's uh, this from Nachmanu Haradak had a sefer that that was a sefer of Chassidus. And the Alter Rebbe writes a letter, and it's addressed to the Chassidim to offer them some sort of nachama, to offer them some sort of consolation. That's the letter that we're going to be learning Mitzvah Hashem over the coming weeks. Now that's this letter, by the way. Just uh, the next letter, Nigar Sakaydish, which is Simon Chav Ches, is also a letter of uh, Nichum Avelim. And that's the letter that Dalton Rebbe writes to Rebbe Levi Yitzchak of Radichev. Levi Yitzchak Radichev was a mechutan of the Alter Rebbe. Levi Yitzchak Radichev, his grandson, married the granddaughter of the Alter Rebbe. Twice, that is true. And uh, Levi Yitzchak Radichev, his, his son passed away. And when his son passed away, the Alter Rebbe wrote a condolence letter. That's the next letter. So these two letters, in Tanya, Yigar Sakei, there's Simon Chav Zayin, and Simon Chav Ches, 27, 28, are both, we call them Mikhtavi Tanchumen, letters of, uh, of condolences. And um, so usually when someone writes a letter of condolence, I'm so, I'm so sorry to hear about your loss, and uh, that I, hear, I feel your pain. But these, both of these letters are deep, are deep in Yom and Chassidus. Simon Chav Zayin is going to give us an understanding of the nature of life and how, the, how we continue our connection to someone who has passed on, even after the person has passed on. Or very specifically, we're talking about a Rebbe. So it's a letter to Chassidim telling them how they continue their connection to the Rebbe even after a person, even after the Rebbe moves on to the next world, to Elam Ha'emes. That's this letter. And next letter, Simon Chavches, is going to give us an understanding about the spiritual significance, excuse me, of the moment of the Yistalkus of the Tzaddik. So these, those are these two letters. Okay, who took over? Sorry? Who bought the house in Hebron for Chabad? The, the house there that we went to visit, Chabad house. Rebbe Rashab. This was before or after? This is way after. That's, that's we're talking about the early 1900s. This is the, and here we're talking the 1700s. What happened the of Nachem Mendel of Haradok after he was lifted? Who was the rabbit? Who took over? Who was the Milo Mokka? I'm not sure. It's a good question. I'm not sure. That was your question? Who's yeah, the, the, who's yeah. the Milo Mokka? I don't know. Without a rabbit? I don't know. It's a good question. There's no rabbit now either. Now, if you look... <laughs> if you look at the... Um, if you look at this letter, something interesting about this letter. So it's, we're starting on page 290. But if you turn the page, you'll see the letter is not such a long letter. Right? The letter ends where it says on page sure. 292, where it says, Kodim Labracha. And then afterwards it says, Bir al Hanam. So the next page is going to be an explanation on this letter. On this letter. On this letter. So this is something which is unique for this period of Kintanya, that Al Rebbe writes a letter. And then afterwards he decides he's going to write an explanation on the letter. You look in the Mamarim of the Alter Rebbe, if you look in um, something which is quite common, you look in Torah, er, look at the Torah, so there there'll be a mimer, and then there'll be a beer on the mimer. And sometimes, well, it makes sense. <laughs> and sometimes there's going to be a beer on the beer. But that's the Mamarim. And Tanya, by, and by the way, generally speaking, <laughs> if you think that when you're going to learn a mimer, and then the Alter Rebbe, and learn the beer, you think the beer is going to help you, the beer is usually deeper than the mimer itself. <laughs> Deeper and more Kabbalistic and more complicated. Back upon him. But over here, Taka the beer makes uh, clarifies a lot of the things and makes it uh, easier to understand. And it adds also a certain oimic, a certain depth that the beer is going to add over here. But in Tanya, we don't have this any other place. I'll tell you, write something and write a beer. Rabbi Stein's also in his Sefer on Tanya, so he hypothesizes that the original letter of the, of the Alter Rebbe wasn't written specifically to Chassidi Chabad, it was written to. Uh, it was written the Chassidim of the Metal Hard Duck, so it was written in one style. And then the Alter Rebbe wrote a beer 
for, and, the, and the beer is more along the style of Chabad, and that was uh, to explain it in a Chabad way. Mm-hmm. Him, so that's one thing that's unique about this letter, is that uh, we have a beer on the letter. Another thing which is unique on this letter, and as we, as we read through the letter, especially for those of you who are more familiar with Tanakh, what you'll realize is something interesting, is that the letter is basically is woven together, sukkim from Tanakh. Every word, or every other word, every second, third word, is another, is, another, is another little phrase, a little statement from Tanakh. The Rebbe, when he, uh, he, he wrote uh, on the Tanya, in a notebook, he wrote all the Mar Mekoymas, everything, everything with you know, the sources for everything. So this, in this, in this Perek, every third word, the Rebbe's writing, the sources in this Pasuk, this Pasuk in Yeshaya, and this Pasuk in Amos, and this Pasuk in Yechesko, and this Pasuk in Telem. It's written in that way. It's a very poetic, a very poetic language, but it's uh, literally almost every single other word is another, is another, is another pasuk. And the Rebbe spoke about this, and the Rebbe said, that, you know, a tzaddik passing away, a Rebbe passing away. Now the the, the Medir says that misa uh, tzaddikim, the passing of a tzaddikim is shkula kisreifas beis olikeno is as uh, is as difficult as the as the burning of the Beis Hamikdash. So the Alter Rebbe over here, he needs to be Menachem, he needs to console the, he needs to console the, the, the Chassidim. And he felt that um, he needs a higher power. He needs a higher power to do this. It's not that his own words alone are not going to suffice in order to bring a Nechama to, to, to the Chassidim. So therefore he's busy quoting the Psukim with the Koyach of the Torah over here. And maybe he can have its impact and bring a Nechama, a consolation to the Chassidim. And on the same note, the Rebbe says also, you know, even after what Alter Rebbe wrote, he wrote the letter, he felt that it wasn't enough. Al we're still, we're still, uh, we're still shattered. So he wrote a beer on it, he wrote an explanation, just goes to show how difficult it is to recover from the clap, from the maka of the passing of a Rebbe. Okay, let's, uh, let, let, let's get started inside. The first thing that... Which Rebbe passed away right now? This is a letter which is a, of consolation that was written to the Chassidim of Ramanach Mendel of Haradak. Haradak, okay. So we'll start inside. And Ahuvai, Achai, Vireyai, Asher Kenafshihu. My beloved ones, my brothers, my friends, whom I hold as dear as I hold myself. You see very clearly that the Rebbe is. Uh, there's sentimental, it's a certain sentimentality over here, yeah? The Rebbe is being very soft over here. Havaya Alehem, God is upon you. Yichiyu me, you live. Chayim Adoilam, an everlasting life. Vitzatseyem itam, along with your children, Zera emes beruche Hashem hema. Talking about take emes the children, gebenched by Hashem, blessed by Hashem, miatav adelim for now and forever. Achar drisha shleimam kimishpat loyev ishmei. After I've inquired about your welfare, as is appropriate for those who love Hashem. Vasi Ladaber have come to speak alive to the heart. Nitkoim, those who are crushed. Hane Enochim Vanochim, those who are groaning and moaning. Ulanachman bikiflaim with Yeshia. And I would like to offer condolences to Menachem you to console you in a double way. Ashar Shama, and how am I gonna do so? Ashar Shama, I want to repeat Ashar Shama Ozni, that which my ears heard. Vatovinlan, that which I understood. So the Rebbe is saying, here's an idea which I heard. Who did he hear it from? From his Rebbe's. Who are his Rebbe's? Magad the Mezrish, and maybe even in Nachmed Levaradak. Who knows? He doesn't say who we heard it from. Al Maimir Azal, on that which our sages tell us, the Shavach Chaim, the Chol Chaim. There's an interesting um, terminology used in the Gemara and other places. When we want to talk about someone who passed away, we say that this person, Shavach Chaim, the Chol Chaim. It's a euphemistic way that a person died. And what does it literally mean? What does Shavak Chaim mean? Yeah. A person that he left over life for all those who are alive. It's a euphemism. That person left and he left life, you know, he left life behind. He yeah. left life for, for the living. David the Melech, Shavak. It's exactly what? the same. Shavak. He left, yeah, he left over. He instilled life for them. He gave. Them I don't know. Shavak doesn't mean he gave. Doesn't mean instilled. It means he left over. He le- left it over for them. That means, uh, that means when he was alive, he, was, he gave them chayim. That's no, what it means. No, it's not. If I he leave left it, over something, but he, he produced it before. 
if I leave this on the table, it's called I shavak. I left it on the table. So shavak chayim l'chol chayim means he left life. He left over the life for all those who are living, which is a strange way of saying things. Why? Because shavak chayim, you, you'd say, what do you mean? Sadik dies and he leaves life for all those who are living. Uh, those who are living, th- those who are living have their own life. What does it mean he left life for those who are living? It uh, sounds like he's giving life to those who are living. Those who are living have their own life. What does it mean? The following maybe his maybe footsteps. it means a death of a No, the following his footsteps. That's just Gev Chayim. It's, like it's, it's, it's a euphemism. It's Aramaic. It's not Hebrew. Aramaic. It's not Hebrew. It's Aramaic. Oh. But they said if somebody dies, it's Shabak. Shabak dead. Yeah, I never also. heard that. Thing. Yeah. So you learn something new. Okay. So what does this mean? What does it mean? Shavak Chaim Kol Chaim. So Alter Rebbe says I heard. Alter Rebbe says that I heard a pshat, and I want to give over the idea, the idea that I heard, and which he then further developed. But before we get there, we need to take a moment. We need to talk about life. We're saying that a tzaddik leaves life to all those who are living. What is life? You know, we usually when we think about life, we think that life. You think about a time span, from the moment a person is born. Till, more, till, till, until the time that a person passes away. So that's uh, during that duration, that's when there's life. But we know there's a famous Gemara that says, Tzadikim bimisosan kruim chayim. That Tzadikim, even after they pass on, they're considered alive. That everyone knows. But then there's the less famous and less politically correct ending. And Rishoyim. Even as they are, even as they are alive, they're called dead. Now, if we're to take this at face value, so very simply, what does it mean? And it means we cannot anymore define life as something being from the moment that a person is born to the moment that uh, that they pass away. Because here we have a person who was definitely born. And has a pulse, and the heart is beating. And nevertheless, the Gemara tells us this person is dead. And then we have another person who's passed on, is buried six feet under, and the Gemara is telling us that this person's alive. So what is? So then, what is life? How do you define it? How do you define life? Because obviously, it's not the conventional definition. Obviously, Yiddishkeit has a different understanding for the definition of what life is all about. And then a kudah is, is like this. The truth is that we e- even... If I'm going to ask you, Ruven, how's life? Are you going to say, hold on one second? I'm <laughs> alive. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, every, every eight seconds, every, 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 my pulse is there, right? When you say, how's life, what does how's life mean? How's life treating you? It didn't help me anything. <laughs> what is life that it's treating you? What does that mean? How, who, who? You're alive, so how the circumstances, well, is an expression of some sort. <sighs> what is life? What is your life? What is your highest? Doing Hashem's Ratzon. If doing, if, if doing Hashem's Ratzon is your life, that means you're connected to your Neshama. Your Neshama is alive. So then you're alive. Because you're connected to your neshama. Neshama, by the way, even to say that the neshama is alive might be a, a mistake. The neshama is not alive, the neshama is life. Your body isn't alive. Your body is plugged into life. Your body is connected to your neshama, and therefore it goes along on the ride for 70, 80 years, 100 years, 120 years, the body tags along. And is alive by virtue of the fact that the neshama is inside it. Your body is not essentially alive. Your body is dead. Neshama is life. Body is dead. There's a passage that says, a passage that says, 
Rei nasati lefnechem ayoyim esachayim esatoyim esamav esara. Right? Ibishter says. See, I want you to see. I put in front of you that which is good and, that, and life, and that which is evil and and death. Ubacharta b'chayim. Hashem implores us, please. I want you to choose life. There's a mimer from the Rebbe Rashab. The Rebbe Rashab says. What does this mean? Who's this pasuk talking to? Talking to someone who's suicidal? Like, what's uh, what's going on over here? A person has to be instructed to choose life. But he says no. He's saying in every single thing in this world, there's life and there's death. The body is the, the body is the death, and the neshama is the life. It's not only in human beings; in everything. So there's a piece of cake over there. What's the body of the cake? The body is the texture. The body is the taste, the color. That's the body. What is the neshama of that? The neshama of that is the energy. And main, and more than that, the, the energy is its kavana, its divine purpose, which is its neshama. What's its divine purpose? That someone should be able to eat that piece of cake. To make a bracha. And to be able to learn Torah with the koyach of that. Right? So in the Tehbish there says, I want you to look around the world and realize that in every single and every single interaction that you have, in every single object you have, there is the there is the life and there's the death, there's the guf and the neshama. I need you to walk around life choosing life. In every situation, I need you to choose life. I need you to choose the neshama. I need you to choose your own neshama. I need you to identify with your own neshama. I need you that any time that you're interacting with something, b'charta b'chaim. The life, the life is the neshama. And that begins before a person is born. And after the body dies, that life continues, obviously, because the neshama is immortal. So we say, Rishoyim, Rishoyim, even when they're alive, they're dead. Why? Because even when they're alive, they're disconnected from life. They're disconnected from the neshama. And Sadiqim, even when Misasa, their body died, okay. But Krim Chayim. Why only tzaddikim? Everyone's in Shaman Lazan. Why only tzaddikim? Even the Bishem also. Sorry? The Shaman also goes yeah. on. So, Mershoim, Bechayeh, and Kruim, I get it. Mershoim, they're dead when they're alive because even when they're alive, they're not, they're, they're, not they're disconnected. Oh. Okay. But why we say only tzaddikim are called alive after they pass away? Mershoim also have a Shaman that lives on. But that's the question. The question is, how's life? What's your life? What's your life? If you go to Atzadik and you say, how's life? As opposed to you go to an average person and say, how's life? <coughs> go to an average, how's life? The person will say, how's life? <coughs> well, my partner, okay, after he, get, after he gets past the, you know, the, Technicals, you know, Baruch Hashem. How's my life? You want to know? Okay. My prognosis is like this. <laughs> my health was like this. You know, uh, right? Go to Tzaddik and you say, Tzaddik, how's life? Tzaddik is not thinking about Parnassah. Tzaddik is not thinking about life. What is the life of a Tzaddik? Al-Tarebbe is going to say over here, the life of a Tzaddik is three things. He's going to bring Sukkim to... Uh, Support what he's saying. A tzaddik's life is avas Hashem, love for Hashem, yiras Hashem, oav Hashem, and emuna, faith in Hashem. That's a tzaddik's life. The rest of us, we walk around thinking about, you know, what motivates us in life. We wake up in the morning, what are we thinking about, you know, the... Again, the food and parnasa and comfort and all these things. At Sadiq, the only thing going on in there, the only thing that's driving him or her is their love for Hashem, their awe for Hashem, and their amuna. All of these things, Ava, Yira, Amuna. They're all, after the person passes away, they continue. If 
you go to the tzaddik the day before you died, what were you doing? I was busy feeling Avas Hashem, Yiras Hashem, and having a moon on Hashem. And then a day after the tzaddik dies, you go to the tzaddik and you say to the tzaddik, what are you busy with now? He'll say, I'm busy with Avas Hashem and Yiras Hashem and Amunah. Nothing changed. Why is that? When we say that a tzaddik continues to live, that means there's no difference. A tzaddik here in the body, and then the tzaddik after 120 years, the Zal Bazach. Someone who's not a tzaddik, when the, when the neshama leaves the guf, so pretty much everything that that person has been living for comes to a crashing halt. My goals in life were to have a big bank account, to have a nice car, to have uh, a nice house, to have a lot of honor and fame. It's cool. And all that's gone. None of that comes along. Not only none of that comes along. The body which desired all those things is now is now is now in the is now in the earth, right? In the ground. So that doesn't exist anymore. None of that exists. Does the Neshama live on by a Russia? For sure the Neshama lives on. But that's not the person. When you say how's life, what's your life? You go to a tzaddik and you say, how's life, right? The tzaddik's life continues because the tzaddik always was Ava Yir Amuna. It was that way during the 120 years when he was here and it remains the same afterwards. A Rosh, on the other hand, is dead over here. And yeah, the neshama lives on, but the neshama was never his life. We can't say that this person is living on. This person's dead. The neshama is living on. To put it in somewhat different words. When a person dies, the question is, we know that the person dies, the neshama lives on, and the guf dies. So what do we say? Did the person die, and the neshama lives on? Or do we say the person lives on, and the guf, and the body died? What would be the correct way of saying it? Do you say, oh, that guy died, but his neshama lives on? Or do you say, that person's living, the body died? <clears throat> Who is that person? Did that person die or is that person living on? By a tzaddik, the answer is that person lives and the guf died. By a rasha, the answer is that person died because the person and everything they were involved in died and the neshama lives on. How about the goyim? It's a real question. When, when I give a class to goyim, we'll talk about that. Don't <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we say that the worst rasha is, is mali mitzvah? Yes. So, uh, you know, how could, how could it be? That? The answer is that I am painting over here a black and white picture, and it's almost never black and white. So the question is really, to what extent, to what extent do you live with your neshama? That's how much you're alive. To the extent you live with your neshama, that's the extent of your life. To the extent that you identify and with, the, with the ideals and goals of the body, to that extent, you're dead now. That's... Uh, yeah. So how come we're saying tzaddik ve'ra'lo, rasha ve'toglo? We see rasha, he has everything. A tzaddik is very, very rare. It's a great question, but it's not relevant to the issue of, of what we're talking about over here, which is the life and death. It's not the... It's a separate question. There's a story, which I believe I've said here before. It's one of my favorite stories, it's one of my go-tos. A story and also the, a, a fascinating, incredible explanation that the Rebbe gives on the story. Back in Russia, in the 1920s, the Friedrich Rebbe was once taken in for interrogation by the, the, the Russian secret police. This is before the KGP. Before the KGB, there was the NKVD. Before the NKVD, there was the GPU. Well, this is the GPU. The GPU. The GPU. The GPU. What does it stand for? <laughs> you bought it, man? This is we're talking about the early 20s. 
This is, yeah, this is the early 20s. Probably the, get, born in hope, right? the Gepa, the Sichas, the Gepa, oh, that's what it's called, right? Who they they're born, born in the Fidik Rebbe. Fidik Rebbe. Good question. So they, put, they, put, they bring in the Fidik Rebbe into a room, and there's a big table, and there's interrogators all around the table. All Yidin, by the way, all them who speak Yiddish. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is the sex, sure. Yes, yes, yes. They had a whole division called the Yevsekzia, oh, yes. which was, their job was to eradicate you, this guy, and it was fully stopped by you. Yeah. One of the people who arrested the Fidik Rebbe in 1927 was the son of a Lubavitcher, and in fact, that he was born through a bracha of the Rebbe Rashab, the Fidik Rebbe's father. So, <laughs> some, some bracha. Yeah. Oh, he goes yeah. So the Fidik Rebbe is sitting, and everyone's sitting on the table, and everyone has a, a, a gun, a gun, a revolver sitting in front of them, talking about intimidation tactics. And they're, they're, they're uh, firing questions at the Fidik Rebbe. And the Fidik Rebbe is being Kedarki Bakedash, as was his habit, he was being highly uncooperative. And one of them loses his patience to the Fidik Rebbe and picks up his gun or points to his gun and says to the Fidik Rebbe, You see this toy that I have over here? This toy makes people speak. What? Huh? This toy makes people speak. In fact, even people who are mute, this toy <laughs> makes them speak also. And the Fidik Rebbe calmly responded and he said, you know, That toy that you have over there, it scares people who have multiple gods and one world. Or one world and multiple gods. I have one god. And I have two worlds, so that toy doesn't scare me. In fact, it doesn't make any impression on me whatsoever. That's the story. Now, the story in and of itself is a pretty uh, incredible story. Peter Gerebbe, the bravery that he exhibited in Russia, in that story in general, we know that Peter Gerebbe stood up, stood up against uh, the full force of the USSR. Opening Chadar, Bikwais, etc. He was wanted number one. The names and names. They yeah, were. tonight actually is uh, tonight is business, and tonight is actually the yard site of the Rebbe Rashab. So today is the day when the Fidik Rebbe became Rebbe, in 1920. So the Rebbe, however, has a incredible insight on the story. The Rebbe says. Most people understand the story on a superficial level. There's a much deeper, much deeper layer going on over here. Most people understand the story. The Fidik Rebbe told the interrogator, hey, that, that gun doesn't scare me. You know why? I have, a home, I have another world. So what's going to happen? You're going to shoot me? Okay. I'll go to the next world. Rebbe says, Fidik Rebbe was saying something deeper than that. Fidik Rebbe was saying, the gun doesn't scare me because I have two worlds. And I'm already in the next world. So therefore, that gun can't do anything to me. No change. It's not that, oh, you, if you shoot me, so okay, so you're not annihilating me, you're not destroying me, because I have another world to go to. No, no, no. <clears throat> you should know that I have two worlds. I'm already in the other world. I'm already in Elam Haba. So therefore, what do you... Shooting is nothing. What, what does that mean? That means there's the world of the goof, and there's the world of the neshama. And the Fidik Rebbe is saying, I'm already in the, I'm in the, I live in the world of the Neshama. What are you going to do? You're going to shoot my Neshama? Can't do that. You can shoot a goof, but I'm not there. I'm not, I don't live in that world. I don't live in the world of goof. I live in the world of Neshama. So what, what are you going to do? How, how do you think you're scaring me with that? A tzaddik is someone who, even when they're here living in this world, their life isn't a life of goof. Their life is a life of Neshama. And be misasal when they die, when the goof dies. So what happened? <laughs> it's in continuing. Continue. Continuing. A Russia, on the other hand, is a life of goof. By the way, for a Russia to die is very scary. You know that uh, there's this thing in the world today, it's called uh, a fear of death. It's a very powerful fear of death. People have it. There's a fancy word for it called thamatophobia. And there's a lot of psychological theories about this, how so much of what our behavior is motivated by our fear of death. And what does Yiddish guy have to say? He 
Is fear of death a good thing? Yeah. It is. You should be scared of dying. So what's the Eitz? Don't die. <laughs> Live a life of the Neshama and then you don't die. Dying is goof. If you live a life identified with goof, you should be scared of dying because it's going to happen one day. And when that happens, boom, everything comes to, to a crashing halt. So if you're scared of dying, stop it, don't die. We have the prayer. We have the prayer of Tzadik and Bimisas and Kriyim Chai. We have the prayer not to. A Tzadik isn't scared of death. The famous Gemara. Gemara says, <coughs> before, before Rebbe was about to pass away, if I remember correctly, he comes in and sees that Rebbe is crying. And he asks him, oh, what's the answer? Why are you crying? You stay the mace, but someone who dies from a place of crying. It's a simon, it's a simon, it's not a simon raw, it's not a good. So that be answered, why am I crying? I'll tell you, mitzvah I'm dying because I'm not going to be able to learn Taylor and do mitzvahs anymore. So this is a deep uh, dialogue. I think that he comes in and says, Rebbe's crying. Says, Rebbe, you're crying? What are you scared of? You're at Sadiq. Well, you're crying because you're gonna, the, the goof is, is going to die. You're not the goof. You're the neshama. It's a pasnisht. Why are you crying? A rusher cries when they're about to die because boom, the whole life, 80, 70, 80 years devoted towards making another dollar. That's all gone. So Rebbe said, no, no, you don't understand. I'm not scared of dying. <laughs> it's not why I'm crying. <laughs> crying simply because at the end of the day, even though my neshama is going to live on it, and the neshama is going to take on Eden and everything, but tell you it's just tomb I can't put on. Shabbos, I can't keep. I can't make kiddush. I can't put up a mezuzah. That's why I'm crying, not because I have any fear. I have no fear of it. You know, Shimon Barichai, before he passed away, what did he say? Make a hilula, right? This is a tzachasana. Good. So what have we done? We redefined life. What is the life of a tzaddik? The life, first thing we have to know, that's the first thing that the Rebbe is going to lay, we're going to read it in the letter right now. The first thing you have to know is that the life of a tzaddik is not judged by a pulse, it's not judged by a heart rate. The life of a tzaddik is their neshama, and how it does express itself? The life of the tzaddik is their avas Hashem, their yiras Hashem, and their mother. Let's do this in time. <coughs> Four lines on the top of the page, Kuf Membav. He, because tzaddik be'munase yichyam. Four lines on the top of the page, Kuf Membav. Oh, four lines. Yeah, the end of the line. <laughs> <laughs> a tzaddik lives by his amuna. So what do we see over here? The life of a tzaddik is their amuna. There's another pasuk that says, so tzaddik is one pasuk, Chabakuk. There's another pasuk that says, Yiras Hashem Lachayim. Yiras Hashem is for life. So again, none of these psukim over here, the Pashtun Pshat, Alter Rebbe is saying, but Alter Rebbe is, uh, this is Drush. That for a tzaddik, what is the what is his life? Is Yiras Hashem? Uberish be eish shall have us ahavasoi mechaim, and also another pasuk that talks about the fiery burning love. Shat tzaddik loves Hashem, which is also for life. And what is a tzaddik about? Lochil b'hen chayi ruchay. A tzaddik subsumes in these three midas, in the midas of. Ava and Yira and Amuna, the tzaddik subsumes in them his entire life. Kol yimei chelde, all of the days that the, per- the tzaddik is living in this world. That is what a tzaddik is. Can you explain what Amuna is for a tzaddik? Amuna for a tzaddik is the same as Amuna for everyone else. Okay. Which is? Faith in Hashem. Okay. No matter what happens, I know everything's from Hashem. It's an absolute assurance that I have, and I walk around feeling confident, and knowing not, nothing and nobody can hurt me. Everything is from Hashem. Okay. Thank you. And when and when the day comes, be all this Hashem The day comes when Hashem brings up to him the Ruach, the spirit of the Tzaddik. By the way, this pasuk is a pasuk that says by Eliyahu. Vahi bahali Hashem ruchah is a pasuk that says by Eliyahu. V'nishmasei elav yasef. Again, literally, every two, three words. Another pasuk. V'nishmasei elav yasef. And the Eibushter gathers neshama above. 
V'yala bi'ilu yachar ilu yadrum ha'maylos. And the tzaddik goes up level after level until the highest level. What happens now? What happens when the tzaddik, when Hashem gathers the neshama and the ruach back? I want to point out something, which is that we know that the neshama is comprised of five different levels. Nefesh, ruach, neshama, chaya, and yechida. Now, chaya and yechida are transcendent elements of the neshama, which means they never integrate with the body in the first place. They transcend the body. So therefore, it's not shy to say that when a person passes away, they leave the body because... Uh, <laughs> they never were there. They never were there. They're the source of the life in the, neshama, uh, in the body. Then we have nefesh, ruach, and neshama. So these three, nefesh, ruach, and neshama, they're in the body. I don't mean spatially, but they connect to the body. You note that al Rebbe writes over here, when Hashem brings up to him the ruach, the spirit, and gathers the neshama, what's missing over here? The nefesh? Why doesn't he mention anything about the nefesh? And the answer will become clear, not over here, but in the beer. Remember, I said there's a beer on this letter. Well, Tadabi explains something very interesting. This is just a little of a teaser, which is the nefesh take doesn't leave the body. The nefesh remains with the body in the caver. We'll learn, we'll learn about that more, some more in the beer. And actually, that's the reason why we go to a caver. Ever wonder about that? Why are you going to the caver of a tzaddik? Didn't we just finish saying that uh, tzaddik v'chal isn't the guf? Well, 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 the tzaddik is the neshama. Why are we going to the caver of a tzaddik? I want to connect spiritually to the tzaddik. What does that have to do with the caver? And the answer is that the nefesh of a person remains in the caver, which is why the caver is a sort of a communication port which connects where a person can connect to the tzaddik. That's why he doesn't, every word here is exact. It talks about ruach and neshama. He doesn't mention nefesh for this reason. So, but by the way, Rabbi, it makes sense that uh, I've heard amazing stories of people who go visit the Lubavitch or Rabbi's cave. Ever. Miracles happen, and this coincides with what you're saying that the nefesh stays in the grave uh, of the tzaddik. This is true about all tzaddik? Sure. Wow. It's amazing. Uh, uh, now it makes sense. Gurugoy has a nefesh also. You okay. Know, he doesn't have a neshama, but he has a nefesh. Okay. So does that stay with him also? I'll give you the same answer if I'm giving you a, when I give a class to Goyim. I'll Go research ahead. the topic. <laughs> I'll know all the answers. The face is, I don't you're know. My huh? You're my buddy. I don't What's know. What's the function I of the nefesh, though? Sorry. When when the tzaddik was alive, the nefesh that remains after he dies. What was that function of? We'll, we'll, we'll learn about that in the beer. Well, as I said, just a little of a teaser. I just want to mention to you uh-huh. the, Rebbe, the preciseness of the wording over here that we talk about the nefesh and the, and the ruach, not, sorry, the neshama and the ruach, not the nefesh, because the nefesh doesn't, doesn't go up. Okay. Well, let's go. So the tzaddik. Get there sorry? Fast. I don't think we're going to get there too fast. There's a face off coming up, you're saying? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it's a, this is a long, uh, you know. Yeah, but we're moving, we're moving. Yeah. So, when the tzaddik goes up to heaven, what happens? Shava chayi ruchay. The tzaddik, remember we said that. When the tzaddik passes away, we say that he leaves life for, for all those who are living. But now we understand. What does it mean that tzaddik leaves his life for all those who are living? What is the life of a tzaddik? If we thought that life is a time span from the moment that a person is born till he passes away, what does it mean that Sadiq leaves life for us? The Sadiq has his life, which lasted from the moment he was born to the moment he passed away. And I have my life. What do you mean that Sadiq is giving me life? What do you mean that Sadiq is leaving me from his life? His life finished, by the way. But now that we understand that life is not is not a time span. What is the life of a Sadiq and Muna Avivira? So what are we going to say? When the tzaddik passes away, you know what happens to his life? He leaves some of that life for everyone else. Like, for example, uh, when uh, Rabbi Gordon passed away, I'm sure you, you know him, he, he left all his lessons on, on Chabad.org. So each and every day, I'm learning uh, from Rabbi Gordon. Right. N- no? It's, not, it, it's a similar idea. You're saying the tzaddik leaves over a legacy which people can gain for it. But here... We're saying that literally the life of the tzaddik, what is the life? <coughs> He's leaving that over for us. We can all tap into the muna, the ava, and the yira of the tzaddik. How do you do that? We'll find out.
<laughs> but this in general this is a little of a leap and it takes a certain understanding that connecting to a tzaddik means connecting to a tzaddik's life there's a famous Hayyim Yom if I recall correctly it's Chav Dalet Sivan and it's Hayyim Yom which is an excerpt from a letter that the Fidik Rebbe wrote to someone someone writes a letter to the Fidik Rebbe and basically the Fidik writes to the Fidik Rebbe I want to know what is my connection to you we know that by Chassidim Hiskashrus to Tzadik connection to Tzadik is a big deal person writes to the Rebbe how can I be connected to you Never met you. We don't. In the words, he says, uh, I don't know you. I don't recognize you. I don't know you. So he writes to Fidig Rebbe, how, how, how can I connect you? So Fidig Rebbe says, You should know. The Iskashros, Hamitis, the true Iskashros is through learning Torah. Oh. When you learn my Torah, you learn my Mamar, and you listen to what I say. In other words, you uh, you do the tilim like the Fidi Kaber requested. Then you're connected to me. And it's fascinating, because the Fidi Kaber doesn't say, oh, we don't know each other. So how do we connect? It's not a tough one. You know what? You know what? I'll give you option B. Since we don't know each other, I'll give you a alternative way to connect to me. It's not what it says there. Here it says, you want to connect to me, and you're saying that the problem is that we don't know each other. Like, I, I never saw you. Like, I, I don't get it. Connection is seeing. And if I did see you, and if you did see me, then we're connected. Connected, it's connected to my life. You look at me, you know me. You look at me, you're connected to me. Life is deep. What is the life of a tzaddik? <coughs> the Fidik Rebbe says, you want to know my life is? My life is the Mamarim that I say. Learn my Mamarim. That's how you connect to me. Oh. You, know, you want to know what my life is? I'm passionate about saying Tehillim. Say Tehillim and we're connected. My life is, I'm passionate about Chassidim and Anash and they're obviously Yisrael. And he says over there, when you get together with Anash and if I bring with them, that's how you connect it to me. Because that's my life. The life of a tzaddik is not Again, we have to move away from life. The definition of life is being from point A in time to point B in time. Versus, how is life? Right? As he started off, how's your life? What is your life? Sasson, what's your life? Coming to every third that you attend. Coming every third. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's life. That's life. Yehem chayenu, right? That's life. If that's life, what's death? <laughs> death is not coming to Tanya Shir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I, was, I met that as a joke. Yeah. <laughs> and I didn't, by the way. What? And I wasn't joking. <laughs> the story of the Kiva, the fox and the fish. What's life? I'll tell you that's life. Let's do inside. So Shavak Chayi Ruach Pulase. The Tzaddik leaves over the life of his Neshama and the life of that which he has done. Asher Ovad Balafanim Yisrael. That which before the Tzaddik went up to the higher world. That he was that Avodah he was doing amongst Klal Yisrael, amongst us. Puula Tzaddik Lachayim. And ultimately, the, the work of a Tzaddik is about is about life. And what, again, the life of a Tzaddik, which is a Muna. Ava and Yira. L'chol chai. The tzaddik leaves over his life to all those who are living now. So what, what you're basically saying, what you're saying exactly is, what the Atar Rebbe is saying is, by e- e- emulating the Ava, y- Yira, and Amuna of that tzaddik, you're connecting with that. We're close. We're no? You're not far. Let, 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 let's do it. Let's see what he says. He nefesh kolchai. Who does the tzaddik leave this over to? All the people. Hakshura benafshi. All those are connected to the tzaddik. Bechevli avrises avar avar rabav avasel. All those are connected 
with thick ropes of love, great love, eternal love, love that never goes away. Who is the one who desires life? Again, being life, the life of the tzaddik. The dafka ba Hashem chaim, and thereby to connect to the living Hashem. Ba avidosay tidbak nafshay. That person should connect to the avoida of the tzaddik. <coughs> Which what is the avoida? Again, I said the avoida is amuna ava and yira. Vohisa tserura b'tsreir hachaim as Hashem, and then the person remains connected in the bundle of life to Hashem. Bechayi ruach apenu, and remains connected to the life. Of Ruach HaPeinu, the breath of our nostrils. Asher Amarnu B'Tzilei Nichyeh Bagoyim, the one who we said will live in that person's shadow, in that person's shade amongst the Goyim. Asher Shavak Lonu B'Kol Echad V'Echad. So that life, the Tzaddik left for every single one of us. Kefi Bechenat Yiskashusei Be'emes, to the degree that we are connected to that Tzaddik with an Emes. Ve'avasei Avas Emes, to the degree that we have a love to that Tzaddik, a love which is pure, from the depths of the heart. Why? Because loves refl- um, hearts reflect each other. When you love the tzaddik, the tzaddik loves you back. Our love for the tzaddik brings about a love from the tzaddik back to, to us. And the, the spirit of the tzaddik standing amongst us literally because when the tzaddik sees Yeladov, his children Maise Yadav the ones we created the tzaddik created us into, into Yidin into Eved Hashem Bikir Boy Yakdishu Shmoy Yizbarach that they are blessing I'm not sure what the word Bikir Boy means over here when the tzaddik sees that his children are sanctifying the name of Hashem, that Hashem's name becomes greater and sanctified, when we go on the straight path, which he taught us from his ways, and we'll go on his ways, forever and ever. Okay, we didn't, we didn't yet really fully explain how exactly we connect to the tzaddik and get his life, but we've established up until this point is like this. The tzaddik has life. That life that the tzaddik has is not the, the traditional definition of life. We're talking about amuna avavira. And when the tzaddik passes away, to those people who are connected to the tzaddik with love, the tzaddik leaves over some of that life for us. And therefore, we're able to tap into that and experience the Ava and the Yira and the Muna of the Tzaddik. What do we have to do to get it other than love the Tzaddik? We'll continue this conversation in Mir Hashem next week. Oh.